Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partner. Welcome back to San Diego. It's KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2019. You're watching theCUBE. I'm Stu Min, and my co-host for three days of live coverage is John Troyer, and happy to welcome, fresh off the keynote stage, uh, to my right is Azhar, Azhar Saeed, who's the chief architect for Telco at Red Hat, and the man that was behind the scenes for a lot of it, Hanan Garcia, Telco Solutions Manager at Red Hat. Uh, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. And, Thank you very uh, much for inviting us here. Thank very you for having us. Interesting keynote. So, you know, 5G, uh, you know, my background's networking, we all watch it. Um, uh, let's say my telco provider already says that I have something related to 5G on my phone that we grumble a little bit about, but we're not going to talk about that. What we are going to talk about is the keynote. Uh, we had uh, China Mobile up on stage. Uh, maybe a, I love a little bit behind the scenes, as you were saying, uh, you know, the, the cloud native enabled, not just uh, the, you know, the keynote and what it's living, but gives a little bit of what, what happened. Sure, um, look, when we took on this particular project to build a cloud native environment uh, for 5G, we spent a lot of time planning, and in fact, this is the guy who actually did you know, most <laughs> of that work, um, to do a lot of planning in terms of picking different components and getting that together. Um, one of the things that cloud native environment allows us to do is bring things up quickly, the resilience part of it, and the scale part of it, right? Those are the two important components and attributes of cloud native. In fact, what happened last night was obviously one of the circuit breakers tripped and we actually lost power to that particular entire part that you saw on stage. I mean, nobody knows about this, I didn't talk about it as part of the keynote, but guess what? Through, because it was cloud native, because it was built in an automated fashion, people were able to work Yes, they spent about three hours or so to actually get that back up, but we got it back up and running and we showed it live today. But what I'm not trying to stress on how it failed or why it failed, I'm trying to stress on how quickly things came back up and more importantly, only cloud native way of doing things could have done that, otherwise it wouldn't have been possible. All right, so Hanan, as, as the man behind the scenes there, uh, it, it's great when we have, you know, here's actually the largest telco provider in the world, uh, you know, showing what uh, it, it, it's happened. So the title, Kubernetes Everywhere, the Telco Edge, gives a little bit of behind the scenes as to kind of the, the, the mission of building this solution and how you got, you know, your, your, your customers, your partners uh, engaged and excited to participate in this. Well, it was a very interesting enterprise to realize, actually, we took four months around uh, 15 partners, and, and, and uh, I would say partners, because in that case I'm taking uh, uh, Bell Canada and China Mobile as a partners. They are part of the project, they were giving us the requirement, helping us all the way through it, and together other uh, more uh, commercial partners, and of course, uh, as well as our alliance, like uh, the team in, in Eurocom and uh, Open Interface Alliance as well working with us. It was about 80 to 100 people working behind the scenes to get this work, uh, to have a lab uh, directly completely set up with a full uh, 4G containerized mobile network in France, uh, have the same in Montreal, 4G and 5G cores directly in Montreal as well, uh, in one of our partners, uh, Calum uh, Labs, and then bringing here the 5G pop uh, and have everything connected through the public cloud. So we have everything in there, so all the technology, all the mobile technology was there. We have enterprise technology that we're using to connect all the, all the labs and the, and the pop here with the public cloud through SD-1 uh, um, technology. And we have, of course, deployed, as, as, as our, uh, was mentioned, we deployed Kubernetes on the public cloud, and we have as well Kubernetes, open, Red Hat OpenStack, uh, sorry, Red Hat OpenShift container platform running on the, on all the prems in the lab in France, the lab in Montreal, and the pub here. Mm. Uh, as I say, it was kind of an interesting enterprise. We have some hiccups last night, <laughs> but uh, we were able to put that out. The, the, the world of telco, very specialized, very high service level agreements, I always want my phone to work, and so a little bit uh, uses some different terminology than the rest of IT sometimes, That's right? That's true, NFB yes. and BNF and, and VCO, but so maybe let's tell people a little bit, like what are we actually talking about here? I mean, people also may not be following Edge and, and telco and what's actually sitting in their hometown or, or it used to be embedded chips and then it was like Linux, but we're actually talking about 
installing Kubernetes clusters in a lot of different really interesting topologies. That's absolutely true. Actually, the way Hanan described it was perfect in the sense that we actually had Kubernetes clusters sitting in a data center environment in France, in Montreal, and a remote pop that's sitting here on stage. So it was not just independent clusters, but it was also stretch clusters, where we actually had some worker nodes here that were attached back to the Montreal cluster. So the flexibility that it gave us was just awesome. We can't achieve that uh, you know, in general. But you brought up an interesting topic around uh, you know, carrier uh, or, or the, the telcos operate in an environment which is different. And cloud native principles are set a little bit different where they want very high availability, they want very high reliability, big, good amount of redundancy. Well, cloud native environment actually provides those attributes to you, but the operational model is very different. You have to almost use code as throwaway, hardware as throwaway, and do a horizontal scale model to be able to build that. Whereas in the older environment, hardware was a premium, switches and routers were a premium, and you couldn't have a failure. So you needed all of those you know, compliance of high availability and upgradability and so on. Here I'm upgrading processes in Linux. I'm upgrading applications. I can go deploy anytime, tear them down anytime. I'm monitoring the infrastructure using metrics, using telemetry. That wasn't the case before. So a different operating environment, but it provides actually better resiliency models than what telcos are actually used to. Yeah. Um, it's a complicated ecosystem to put all these pieces together. Uh, gives gives a little insight as to uh, you know Red Hat's leadership and uh, the, the the partners that help you put it together. I would let him yeah. answer that. <laughs> Um, I'll say it's, it's not our first rodeo. We have been uh, working on the virtual central office project with the, with the Lino Foundation uh, networking and OPNFE uh, community for th three last years, uh, let's say. And the interesting part of this one is that even though we typically were working with what the technology that they are using now, uh, we decided it's time to go with the technology that we'll be using from now on. Um, but of course, uh, there is a set of partners that we need we need to build the infrastructure from scratch. So for example, we have uh, Lenovo that was bringing all the, all the servers uh, for, uh, for the setup in, uh, in Montreal and here in San Diego, which actually the San Diego pub was built originally in Raleigh, in Lenovo facilities and shipped all over the country to here for the show. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, the fabric part, so the networking part, that's Escalum. Uh, this was working, bringing us the, the software defined fabric. Uh, to connect all the, uh, the infrastructure. And then, then we start building the software layers on top. So we have Red Hat um, OpenShift Container Platform for the two, completely deploy on bare metal servers. And then we start adding all the rest of the component like the 4G core from Altran, like the 5G, uh, 4G and 5G radio from Altran, uh, together with Intel, Comscop. That is building, start building the mobile part of it. In Montreal, in San Diego, and then we add on top of that, then we start adding the IMS core in the public cloud. And then we connect everything through the SD1 by tuning. Right. So a couple of things that I'd like to highlight in terms of coordinating partners. Getting to know when they're ready. Figuring out an onboarding process that gives them a sandbox to play with their configurations first before you connect them back into the main environment. Partitioning that, working simultaneously with multi. We had a Slack board that was full of messages every day. We had a nonstop, you know, every morning we had a scrum call, right? It's like a scrum meeting. Every morning, just a daily stand up from 8.30 to 9.30, and we continued that. Uh, and all, all over the day, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Ashar, one of the things I really liked to, to China Mobile uh, when they talked about in the keynote, first of all, they, they said, you know, the promise, you know, 20 by, by 2026, you know, it, it's rainbows and unicorns and, you know, 5G, uh, you know, will, will help, you know, enable so much around the planet. Seriously. Um, but, you know, today, Xi she, Fu she talked about major challenges in the rollout in infrastructure and service and capability. So, 
you know, help us understand a little bit the hype from reality of where we are with 5G, what we could expect. Absolutely, uh, we are going through the hype phase yeah. right now, right? We are absolutely, all the operators want a 5G service to be delivered, for sure. The reason why they want it to be delivered is they don't want to be left behind. Now, there are some operators who are moving more opportunistic and looking at 5G as a way to insert themselves into different conversations. IoT conversation, um, smart city conversation, right? Um, edge compute conversation. So they're being very strategic about how they pick the set of technologies, how they go deploy in that particular infrastructure and strategically offer capabilities and build partnerships. Nobody is going to rip out their existing 3G, 4G network and replace that with 5G by 2026. It's not going to happen. But what will happen by 2026 is an incremental phase of services that will be continued to offer. As an example, I'll give you, um, cable providers are looking at 5G as a way to get into homes because they can deploy a millimeter wave band uh, radio closer to the house and get a very high speed, multi gigabit high speed connection into the home without having to worry about what's your copper look like, do I have fiber to the home, do I have fiber to the business, and so on and so forth. So that's actually an interesting way. Okay, so you're saying solving the last mile issue in, in a very targeted use case. Absolutely. Yep. So that's one. The other area might be running a partnership with BMW, Toyota, and you know some of these car companies to provide telemetry back from cars into their own you know, operating environment so that they know what's going on, what's being used, how is it being used, how can we, how, how can we do provide diagnosis before the car actually begins to fail. Uh, pick, you know, private environments like uh, oil and gas, mining. They're going to go deploy public safety and security where all of these, uh, you know, policemen are and, and safety personnel are, are required to now use body cams. Now you have video feeds coming from hundreds of people that are deployed on inc incidents. Now you can take that information, you need high speed broadband, you need the ability to analyze data and do analytics and provide feedback immediately so that they can actually act. So literally these specific targeted use cases, even a country like India, where they're talking about using 5G for very specific use cases, not replacing your phone calling. I love that point, and it kind of ties back into some of the other things you were saying about the uh, agility and the operational model, and right. I relate it back to IT. You know, my, again, my perception of some telco may be 20 years old in that they had a tendency to do very monolithic projects, and you know, when you're out, when you're rolling out uh, infrastructure across a country, there's a certain uh, monolithic nature to it. But you're talking about uh, rolling out one, rolling out individual projects, rolling out, that's also the advice we give to IT, try it with one thing, you know, try OpenShift with one, a, one application. Absolutely. And then also though, but it, it takes uh, the upskilling and the cultural model. So, true. you know, with your telco true. partners who are, we're on Slack there with you. And I, you know, I, don't, I don't know if there's any relation, any other kind of things to pull out about the mirror of, of the IT transformation with telco transformation and culture. No, no, and, that, that's actually a yeah. good point that you bring up, right? Look, the costs of building a 5G infrastructure from ground up is extremely high if they want to completely revamp that. You're talking about replacing every single radio, you're talking about adding capacity, you're talking about adding you know, backhaul capacity and so on. So that isn't going to happen overnight, it's going to happen, it, it may take even more 10 years, right? I mean, and the most interesting thing that stat, stat that I saw was, even LTE is going to grow. LTE subscriber count is going to grow for the next two years before it flattens. So we're talking about LTE 4G that's been around for a decade almost, right? And it's going to still grow for the next two years. Then it's going to flatten, and then you'll start to see more 5G subscribers. Now back to the point that you were uh, bringing up in terms of operational model change, and in terms of how things would be, IT principles, applying IT principles to telco. Um, there are still some challenges that we need to solve in Kubernetes environment in particular uh, to address the telco side of the house. And in fact, through this particular proof of concept, that was one of the things we were really attempting to highlight and shine a light on. Um, but in terms of operational models, what you use applicable in IT will now be totally applicable on the telco network. The 
CI CD pipeline, the delivery of applications and software, the testing and integration methodology, the you know, um, operational models, absolutely those. In fact, I actually have a number of service providers or telcos that I talk to who are actually thinking about a common platform for IT and telco network. And they are now saying, okay, Red Hat, can you help us in terms of designing this type of a system? So I think what Hanan could speak to you a little bit about uh, in this context is how the same infrastructure can be used for any kind of application. So you want to talk about how the Kubernetes platform can be used to deploy CNFs and then to deploy applications and how you've shown that. Yeah, well, this is what what we have been doing, right? So we have uh, the Kubernetes platform that is actually deploying the services. We have all these partners that are bringing their cloud native uh, uh, applications on top of that, that what we are calling the CNF, the right. uh, cloud native uh, network functions. And basically what we were doing as well during the whole process is that we have those partners that are still developing, still finishing the software. So we were building and deploying at the same time, and testing at the same time. Dur so, during the last four months, and even, I can tell you, even yesterday night. Even last night. So the, you know, the full CI-CD pipeline that we deploy on IT side, here it is in operation on the network side. Well, yeah, so, so I, I, I want to give you the final word because you know, John was talking about IT cycles. You know, if you think about enterprises, how long they used to take to deploy things uh, and what cloud is doing for them, uh, it sounds like we're going through a similar transformation. Absolutely, in a big, in a big way. Um, telcos are actually deploying uh, private cloud environment and they're also leveraging public cloud environment. In fact, sometimes they're using public cloud as a sandbox for their development to be completed until they get deployed in a private cloud environment. They still need the private cloud environment for their own purposes like security, data sovereignty, and uh, you know, their own operational needs. So, but they want to make it as transparent as possible. And in fact, that was one of the things we want to also attempted to show, which is a public cloud today, a private cloud and bare metal, a private cloud on OpenStack. And it was like, uh, and you know, it came together, it worked, but it is real. That's more important. And uh, for enterprise and for telcos to be literally going down the same path with respect to their applications, their services, and their operational models, I think this is really a dream come true. Right. Well, congratulations on the demo, uh, but even, even more importantly, congratulations on the progress. Great to see uh, you know, the, the global impact this is going to have in the telecommunications market. Definitely look forward to hearing more in the future. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for much. the opportunity to actually be here. All right, for John uh, Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman, back with lots more here from KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2019 in San Diego, California. Thanks for watching theCUBE.